Good evening. Welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. My name is Dave Rosenstein, and I'm a member of Community Board 8 in Manhattan. Our guest tonight is a co-chair of CB8 Second Avenue Subway Task Force, Barry Schneider. Uh, Barry's co-chair, Patrick Stewart, was not able to be with us tonight. Uh, community Board 8 Speaks is a monthly program about issues of interest to residents and businesses in the Community Board 8 area. That area extends on the south from 59th Street to 96th Street, from 5th Avenue East to the East River, and includes Roosevelt Island. You can learn more about the Community Board on our website, www.cb8m.com. Manhattan has 12 community boards. New York City has 59. Community boards play an advisory role in zoning and other land use issues, in community planning, in the city budget process, and in coordination in municipal services. Uh, that language is from the Green Book. It's a terrific little directory of city agencies and offices. Um, if you're interested in being active in New York City, uh, I suggest you take a look at it. It's available at the city store in the municipal building or on the city's website, uh, nyc.gov. And a uh, note to the mayor, it's time for a new edition. The last one was uh, updated almost two years ago. Uh, Barry, we're dealing with a massive project, and you've been uh, chairing monthly or bi-monthly meetings with the community, hearing a lot of upset people, fielding questions, challenges, as if right. our community board is managing this right. enormous uh, project. Right. Uh, for viewers who haven't been on Second Avenue Subway lately, why don't you uh, give a quick summary of the, the, the massive construction project that's taking place. Thanks, David, and thank you for having me this evening. Uh, the Second Avenue Subway actually had its genesis back in the 1929 when it was first proposed. Uh, as, the, as the Upper East Side developed in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, uh, the uh, Lexington Avenue line, the 4, 5, and 6, was just un unable to, to carry the mass of people to the new development in Midtown, uh, from the new developments within the district, both commercial and residential. And so there was a need for a full-scale subway line. Uh, the, this, the, commu the community had got together with the MTA back in 1995, actually, and discussed the, the Mesa plan, which is the Midtown, East Side alternatives. How do you move people from the Upper East Side to the Central Business District and within the Upper East Side. There were many, there were many alternatives. One was to do nothing, let, let nature take its course. That certainly wasn't uh, a, a solution. It wasn't an answer at all. Some thought light rail might be the answer. Some thought in, uh, enhanced bus service. But the real answer had to be subway because the subway moves masses of people quickly and efficiently. And uh, that was the answer. So, uh, say 1995, the, the process began, and the shovel went into the ground in April of 07 to build the phase one of the Second Avenue subway. Phase one, 96th, 86th, 72nd, and winding up at 63rd and Lex, where there is already a station built. Um, the day the subway opens, which will be December 2016, as of today, knock on wood. You said it. Um, we will. That subway will carry 200,000 people. It's the most efficient uh, mass transit project in the country, and that's why we got the funding from the federal government that we did to be able to begin this project, to continue the project, and to end the project. Uh, in essence, that's what the Second Avenue subway now is. The vision, of course, of the full build is from the Bronx, from 125th Street, all the way down to uh, the tip of Manhattan and into, the, into, into Queens, into the Brooklyn, into Bronx. But right now, a passenger in 2016, at the end of the year, that will be able to get on a train in, uh, at, at 96th Street and have a one-seat ride all the way down to the west side and to Brooklyn using the, the Q line, which will be called on the 2nd Avenue subway. Let's focus in a little bit more on what's actually going on now. The, the, the area from, it actually extends north of our community board yes. into uh, n above 96th Street right. to connect with the, the remaining track that was put down in the 70s. But let's take it from 96th okay. down. <clears throat> right now, yeah. the area from 96th to 86th is the greatest impact. Right. So right. for viewers who haven't seen uh, 
what's going on up there. Well, uh, let me let me urge every viewer to get out, come up to 96th Street, 95th, 94th, 92nd, 93rd, and take a look what's going on. And and I'll, I'll make a, a pitch before I tell you what's going on. The businesses of there are hurting mm -hmm. because the the streets are the the, the streets are, are are cut up and the sidewalks are cut back so that and there are fences. There's construction equipment. There's noise. There's activity. The retailers are having a very hard time. Come up and shop Second Avenue. That's the most important thing you can take out of this this, this evening's presentation. Come take a look at Second Avenue in the 90s and shop Second Avenue. Okay, what's going on now? <clears throat> From 92nd to 95th Street is what's called a launch box. The, what are you going to do in a launch box? You're going to launch the tunnel boring machine, the TBM, which will actually bore through the bedrock from just south of 92nd Street all the way south to uh, hook up to the to the existing station at 63rd and, and Lex. In the launch box, <clears throat> there's an, an enormous amount of work was done there, as you know. <clears throat> Utilities, which are underneath the ground, had to be relocated. If they were on the south, the north, on the west side, they had to be moved to the east side so they could work on that. Then they had to be moved back. <clears throat> the lanes of traffic were, were j jostled and jiggled from the west side to the east side and back. Um, as I say, the the activity in the 90s is in preparation to bring in the tunnel boring machine. In the 80s, this, uh, they're they're now constructing the the uh, uh, cavern that will that will be uh, the ho home for this the 86th Street station with engines on on 83rd Street and 86th Street. Uh, further south, there's activity going on in the 70s as well. There are two access holes that are being uh, drilled, blasted, and, and, and built to, to, to create the cavern for the 72nd Street station. A lot of work is going on all up and down the line, and at the beginning of next year, 63rd Street will be visited with this uh, uh, massive construction disruption. We have some photos. I'm not sure if we can bring them up now, but the MTA created a Facebook page. It's a public Facebook page. You don't have to join Facebook to see it. Um, if you Google Second Avenue Subway and Facebook, there, there's a shot of the inside of the launch box. What you're seeing is those horizontal steel supports are holding the sides of this enormous cavern from collapsing in. We're looking south. There are the beginnings of where the subway tunnels are going to go. Those two giant openings were blasted out with explosions that have rocked the neighborhood for the last month. Those are starter tunnels. There's an opening to the sky where the crane will be lowering huge, some, what is it, one was 125 tons? 125 ton, ton pe one piece is 125 ton, another is 60 ton. The whole, the whole, um, tunnel boring machine is 485 tons and it's 22 feet in diameter. It's a monster and the support... That's the size of these tunnels, 22 feet. Yes. And the support uh, for the TV tunnel boring machine is a 300 foot long train and locomotive that will remove debris from the tunnel as it's bored going south through the bedrock. Those are starter tunnels. They're so that the tunnel boring machine, if you were to drive a nail into, into wood, you might want to put a screw into wood, you might want to start a hole. Those are starter holes where the tunnel boring machine, which we have a couple shots that were taken, provided by the MTA, that were taken underground under 42nd Street over around 10th, 11th Avenue. Uh, later on, we'll get to those two images. They're incredible. They show the same machine, the tunnel boring machine, under 11th Avenue and 42nd Street where it's drilling the number seven line. Right. They're enormous machines. They're as wide as that tunnel. So this, this dislocation was to carve this enormous cavern out underneath 2nd Avenue to blow out these starter tunnels. Now much of the work will move underground but the neighborhood will still be impacted. Uh, Barry, yes. what role <coughs> does the community board have, and, and what is a task force anyway? Okay. Uh, we, we, this, was, uh, this was named by the, uh, the uh, chairman of the, of the community board a couple of some years ago. Uh, a task force, I think, is, is designated as different from a committee because we have a specific one 
subject issue. Uh, we're concerned only with the Second Avenue subway and all the uh, strings that come from it. But we're, we, we don't meet on a monthly basis. We don't have a, agendas as a street life committee may have where they have applications before them or the landmarks committee where they have uh, applications a before them. Special single subject. Yeah, there's project. a single subject on the Second Avenue subway. And I think that's the appropriate <coughs> way to, to address the issues of, of the Second Avenue subway. So what's our, what's our role? At, at, at our community meetings with, that you and Patrick uh, co-chair, the public is upset about rodents, about noise, about blasting, about traffic, about so many things that are impacting the quality of life right. on the east side. And they don't understand where the community board fits in and we're there because as volunteers we choose to be of service and to show up, and they get angry at us right. for whatever. Yeah, the we're, we're, yeah we're, we're taking the bullet. Um, but we, we do. We, I think we form. Uh, we, we perform an essential function. Uh, we're we're a broker between the MTA and the community. Our role is to uh, get a dialogue going, pr provide a forum, provide a. a, a place that people can come to hear what the MTA has to say, and more importantly, to have the MTA hear what they have to say. We're, we're their voice, we're their microphone. They're the voice, we give their voice uh, a, a platform so that the MTA can hear what all the issues are, day in and not, not day in and about, but month in and month out as we meet. Um, the issues you, you raise are very, very, are, are very serious issues. Rodent control, noise, dirt, but more importantly, it's a general disruption to their way of life. Uh, they don't have the same, in many cases, their entrance to their, their buildings have been shifted, have been changed, they've been cut back. Um, they, they, don't, they can't walk out on the street and walk 10 or 15 feet on a sidewalk. The sidewalk isn't 10 or 15 feet in many cases, it's five to seven feet. So their whole way of life has been changed. Getting deliveries for the merchants has been in horror because we now have four lanes of traffic, three moving, uh, one is the, some uh, deliveries have to be made on the far side, on the west side. If you've got a shop on the east side, you've got to you've got to ferry that uh, those goods from the west side to the. East. It's very very difficult uh, to make room for the for the construction. The parking regulations have, have changed. They're they're a horror. They're a hodgepodge. Uh, one of the ongoing problems, if when a uh, fellow stops to let passengers off, that's fine in a no standing zone, but if he wants to move merchandise from his car to a store or from a store to a merchant, that's not allowed under the under the regulations. We're working with the Department of Transportation to uh, get the regulations tailored to the conditions that exist on the ground or to have the traffic enforcement agents have a little more compassion and understanding for the unique role that they play in, in, this, in this drama. They, they have to take a look at the whole picture of the Second Avenue subway construction, people's lives, people's livelihoods, and they have to be more compassionate. So bottom line, as, as a community board, have we made a difference? Have we been able to help facilitate this conversation back and forth between the agencies? Ab absolutely. And then this begins uh, uh, five, seven years ago when the, the MTA first came with their plan for the Second Avenue subway. Uh, one of the major concerns of the community was when they, they, the MTA, has to take property to build a ancillary facility or, or an entrance to a, uh, a station, what happens to the, the stores? What happens to the people? The stores I'm not too concerned about because the, 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 the plan of the MTA was to only affect stores who had more than one location. Had well, the sensory lumber is going to be missed by many. That, that's true. That's a, a unique business right. in New well, York for, that's going Unfortunately for, for us, sensory lumber is outside our community district. But within our district, uh, I was, we, were, we were all concerned about what are you, how are the, the people who are going to be dispossessed, mm -hmm. moved out of their, their, their uh, units permanently. How was that going to be treated? Uh, we had meeting after meeting, we brought the MTA together with their real estate people, with the people who are going to be affected, with the elected officials. Uh, originally they were going to have 102 or three families going to be relocated. After cons consultation with the community board and the electeds and the real estate uh, department of MTA, only 49 families were affected. So that's, a, that's I, I think, a role the community board How's played. How's it working out? What are uh, hearing? From, I, from what I understand, there are 30 some odd families have been moved and there have been no issues, no problems. Nothing to, that's been reported to the community board. And at a meeting I attended earlier this month, uh, 
the MTA said they have they, 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 they may have one problem in the people they've already moved. So that seems to be worked out well. They hired a good uh, relocation uh, firm, and they seem to be addressing the problems uh, well. So the initial that's, offers of, of um, amounts of money that they were going to give people to relocate were not very very good, but that's apparently gotten uh, Yeah, that's been that's that's modified, but that's, uh, again, when I try to find out what exactly the arrangements were, the MTA said it's between us and the tenant, and the tenant is not happy, is not willing to come forward. And t they, they've been satisfied, but they're not going to talk about it. They're satisfied, that's all that, that matters. That, exactly. Uh, so that's one, that's one way the, M the community board worked to the benefit of, of the co community. Another way is, is providing these forums. Uh, my big gripe historically, one of the reasons I'm on the community board, is because I, I, I'm, 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 I have no patience with people who will meet me in the elevator and complain about something and say, gee, and, and you know, that's really a bad problem, but they don't reach out beyond the four walls of the elevator. What the community board does is we give voice to these complaints and we direct them to the plate where, where the answers can be achieved, where solutions can be achieved, answers can be had. Um, we, we talk with every city agency. We talk with the Department of Transportation. We talk with the Department of Sanitation, the Department of Housing Preservation. Uh, the, the individual citizen necessarily can't have that access. We, as their surrogate, have that access, and we can make their issue, their their com concerns known, and affect change. We usually um, put up a, a graphic showing the community board's website. Uh, for listeners who aren't that familiar with the community board, if you go to our website at www.cb for community board, eight, the number, M for Manhattan, you'll see the calendar. The calendar is, shows which community board committees are meeting in any given month. If you click on the particular date, it opens up to another page that shows you what's on the agenda of that committee. All of these committees are open to the public. None of them are closed. And third Wednesday of the month is a full board meeting where the issues that come up at the various committees are brought to the full board for many cases for a vote. So take a look at our website, cba8m.com, to learn more about the community board. And you might find that you're interested in getting involved. There's also a place where you can download a, an application to be appointed to the community board by the borough president. Um, there's been a lot of recent discussion about the the, um, the blasting of those tunnels that um, uh, were shown in the in the illustrations. The initial box that was carved out, that huge launch box, was surprisingly uh, tolerable. The level of the explosions, we were we were very concerned, but they were very well managed. The uh, blasts for those those 22 foot wide tunnels surprised the neighborhood because they were different. They were like thunder. Mm -hmm. I live on 91st Street, so I'm right there. And they took place in the evening because it took all day to set up these right. huge, they had to drill a whole series of eight foot deep holes to put in the explosives all around this 22 foot diameter circle and then blow it out and it scared the hell out of the day. <coughs> It um, made people think the windows were going to blow in. At first they, they didn't know what was going on. Um, they're finished. Right. Which is, which is everybody is grateful for. Um, what did what did what did you hear as as a chair well, about those? Uh, well, we we heard the, the, your comment and we heard it repeated um, in the tens and twenties of, of, of calls the community board received. Uh, the answer we got back from the MTA was this is a different kind of blast than the, the blast we had for, for earlier. This is closer to the surface. Uh, it goes horizontally rather than vertically and that, uh, and as you say, those, those holes are eight feet deep, so there's a greater volume of rock being affected. And I, I'm not sure the early, if, if some of the earlier blasting was not uh, of, of soil rather than uh, bedrock, but I'm not certain about that. But um, they could lay mats down on top of the, the yeah, explosives, yeah. so those mats damped it down. Right. But because this was going this way, they didn't have the right. You couldn't dampen the same right. technology. And, and the the the, the, uh, the ground did move when those blasts went off. But as you say, thankfully they're gone. It's over now. We're waiting for the uh, delivery of the t tunnel boring machine to fit in there. So the blasting is over. We got a notice, um, many of us who serve on the community board yesterday about the schedule for the tunnel boring machine. Right. Um, 
you might want to talk about that because it's going to affect the community. Yeah, they're, they're, they're coming in um, now, they're being delivered now, the pieces are being delivered now, and the, the, the delivery should end by the end of this month, by the 30th of April. Um, because the, 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 the individual pieces of that comprise the tenable boring machine are so large, they have to, they, those pieces have to come in to the city from outside of the city overnight between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, those are the rules that are set down by the Department of Transportation. But the, main, the greatest impact is going to be when these things do come in, this traffic on 2nd Avenue, probably from 96 to 86, will be stopped dead from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. because this, these, these pieces are huge. The crane that's going to lift the 100, 200 ton unit is going to be a monster and they just have to have total control of that space and that the way they do it is just shut traffic down. The variable metric signs will be up, notices will be going out, uh, that the traffic will be changed during the 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. until the end of the month. But there's a certain amount of, of truck traffic coming in in the early morning hours that is going to be affected by that. Uh, I guess it'll probably be routed down Lexington Avenue. I'm not sure how they'll route it. Can't go down third or first because those are northbound streets. Right. So, they can't um, get very far going that way. No. <laughs> but that's that's going to have uh, have an impact. The uh, email that we got, all of us, yeah. said that the tunnel boring machine and backup equipment together over 300 feet long. 18 double deck rail cars on which the actual backup equipment is carried, locomotives to haul materials into the tunnel and rail cars for removal of excavated materials will be delivered. The total weight of the TBM, as they call the tunnel boring machine, is 485 tons. It'll be delivered in smaller pieces, I think they said 60 truckloads. Mm. Some of the components are between 60 and 125 tons each. So this is a, uh, it's a pretty dramatic operation. Before the end of this uh, broadcast, which we'll be coming to shortly, we have two shots of the, um, the tunnel boring machine and the, the, the train that goes behind it that were taken by the MTA under 42nd Street where they're, they're drilling uh, the extension of the number seven line. Um, <coughs> Where can the public learn more about the, the progress or, or status of this project? Great. Um, the MTA website is, is, is current day, almost daily, uh, and that site is mta.info, I-N-F-O, mta.info. Uh, you go to that page, on the right-hand side it says uh, Capital Construction. Click on, click on Capital Construction. That'll take you to the list of the Capital Construction projects. Second from the bottom is the Second Avenue subway. Click on that. It takes you to the Second Avenue page. And all the way down to the bottom of that page, it's, it gives you com a complete update on the project of all the presentations that were made to the community board over the last uh, several three years. And uh, all the update information that you need and you want is right there. I see we just put up on the, uh, the screen the contact information for um, the community liaison that the MTA has retained to deal with community concerns. Uh, there's the number for um, Claudia Wilson, 212-792-9716, uh, that's 792-9716. She's the um, representative of the firm that the MTA has retained to work with the community. Well, let me say something about, about Claudia. Um, before Claudia came on board, and that just a couple of years ago, um, we had the impression, or I did in any event, that the MTA was aloof. Uh, that they, were, they had a project, they were going to pursue the project, and uh, they, they, they weren't very uh, easily addressed. We, we couldn't get to them very easily. Uh, since they instituted this new plan of having a community liaison, Claudia Wilson by name, uh, I feel that the, the an MTA has become much more engaged. If you have a particular problem during the construction, call Claudia. She will get you a, an answer. She will resolve the problem. It's not like calling a huge bureaucracy. <clears throat> You're calling an individual who is on site who can give you an answer or get you the answer. <clears throat> and I, I think <clears throat> that, was the, the, that was the turning point in the relationship between the community board and the MTA when Claudia came on board. I don't know if you can answer this, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. Many parents 
are upset that while the subway construction continues and continues to chew up billions of dollars, students are apparently going to lose their free MTA uh, bus and subway cards. Uh, how are these priorities determined? And, and how can the public influence this? Dave, that's a political issue. Uh, <clears throat> the MTA's capital project is separate from their uh, the, the subsidies that they provide on the on the on the trains and buses. I don't want to get into that. Had to, had to put it out there because a parent asked me to. Um, we've got about three minutes left. Um, I'd love to get those shots of the uh, the tunnel boring machine up if uh, if they're available. What have been the biggest surprises uh, to you in this uh, as this project is developed, and what could be future surprises, good or bad? Uh, the, the biggest surprise, David, is that it's actually going forward. There we uh, have on the screen. There's the ah. that's the tunnel boring machine under Forty uh, Second Street, over by Tenth Eleventh Avenue. It looks like a rocket. Hmm. That's why they call it the launch box, I guess. Yeah. That's facing the direction that it's going to be put up against the wall and, and drill. And I think there's another image that shows the, no, that's, well, we don't seem to well, have the another, uh, There's another kind shot, of boring but, machine, but that's another story. Yeah. Um, surprise. Uh, surprise. Surpri surprise that it's actually happening. Because again, I go back to the 1990s when it was, it was, it's so laborious to try to get anything going, to get any indication <clears throat> that action would be taken. And then the political will took hold, and the federal government said, yes, we're going to participate in this to a huge extent. And, and, and the job got launched in April of 07. Uh, as, as, the, as the project has progressed, I haven't, I, I haven't had any particular surprises, David. I'm, I'm, I'm distressed that there are so many people who are put out. I'm concerned about the, the, the terrible come together of bad economy and the Second Avenue subway. Yeah, that's been um, a double whammy. <clears throat> without question, the, uh, Our Town recently had an article about the, uh, the business in the district and how so many have closed and they, they compared 3rd Avenue to 2nd Avenue to 1st Avenue. Surprisingly, more business on closed on 1st Avenue than closed on 2nd Avenue. And the 1st Avenue doesn't have the 2nd Avenue subway. So, but those fellows up on, on in the 90s now and going to be in the 80s and it's going to be in the 70s, going to be in the 60s, have been devastated by, by this. And it's a, com it's, a, it's a combination of the global malaise and the real fact that people are not shopping on Second Avenue because it's not pleasant, it's not comfortable. Let me ask you a wrap-up question. Is this going to be completed? Are we going to be able to get on a train into 2017 and go down to 63rd Street and connect to Midtown? I hope so. 